So what does success look like? The three key components, revenue, profit, and cash flow. I don't think um, it's unrealistic to go to any business owner and ask them what is the most important thing in your business for them to answer cash flow. When in business, you should always seek to, 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 uh, to find a way for the business to be sustainable over the long term. So whatever decision you make, you want to make so that it's in the interest of the long-term survival of the business. It starts with cash flow, but ultimately you want to build something that's going to achieve a high valuation so that you can have a beautiful exit. None of us are here forever. And so one of the things we have to think about from day one strategically is how am I going to exit? Am I going to die while I'm doing this business and bequeath it to my, to my, to my children? Or am I going to work in it for a certain period of time and sell it? Or am I going to bring other managers in and I'm going to be a, a passive shareholder and just live off the dividends? There are various ways or decisions you can make, but ultimately, to make that successful, you need to have a high valuation and giving you the platform for the, for the beautiful exit. How do you measure all those things? So, specifically with regards to assets, and I want to introduce... Uh, another concept that I've learned from a guy called Daniel Priestley. Daniel Priestley uh, wrote a book called 24 Assets. Highly recommend you get that book. Very, very good. And a lot of what I'm going to share with you now comes from that book. Um, with own emphasis added, of course, uh, because he's not here today. Unfortunately, you couldn't make it. Um, but he introduced the concept of revenue per person. Now, when you go to any business, like what do people typically measure? Ah, revenue so much this month. Uh, it, it, it grew from, from 100 to 200 uh, over the last year. And my gross profit percentage is 25%. My overheads recovery rate is 2. Uh, my net profit is this. And my cash flow conversion rate, my debt is days. Um, whom of you have got a headache already? So, so one can overcomplicate those things very, very quickly. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm one of the people that loves all those stats. I want them. I actually want a dashboard that can show me all of those things. Every morning when I wake up, I want to see it. Um, and I mean, that's what I've studied. That's my, that's my trade. It's accounting. So I love seeing all those abstract numbers. They're beautiful to me. If you're a, a young business, a small business, uh, it doesn't really make sense to look at all those things all the time. In fact, my experience in South Africa, many small businesses... Don't even worry about the profit because they use the company as a vehicle to pay themselves a generous and a grand salary. So there's never going to be profit in the business because you work in the business as the owner. So all the money is yours after you've paid your staff and you've paid your suppliers. But the point is, for a smaller business, it doesn't really make sense to focus on profitability margins. So the concept here is revenue per person. So how do you, how do you compute that? Simple. How many people do you have in your business? What's your revenue? And then if you can do maths, revenue divided by, by the number of people, that gives you the revenue per person figure. Important to note, if you as the business owner works in that business full time, in other words, you get all your income from the business, you count as one. If you've employed people, if you were to go to them and ask them, what do you do? If they say, I work for, and it's your business, then you count them as one. If they say, oh, I do this, and I do this, and I do that, and oh, I, I, I subcontract to that company, you count them as a half. So we, we talk about in accounting terms as full-time equivalent, FTEs. So that's an important, uh, just a little nuance in, in this calculation to remember. How many people, it might be 2.5, or it might be 4.5, right? And that's the reason depending on who works in your business and what their level of commitment is. This is now where we then get into the conversation of, of the assets. Why, why is it, does it make sense to, to follow this approach to measure the success of your business? Of course, one of the ways. It's the principle of income follows assets. All right? Think of it as uh, almost as the fuel efficiency of an airplane. Right? Um, the, the, the revenue per person is going to show you how efficient you're actually running the business. So if your revenue increases, let's say your revenue doubles, but you had to 
triple the amount of people in the business. Your revenue per person is going to go down. And actually what you want to see is your revenue per person go up. If your revenue per person goes up, it's a good indicator that you've made the right kind of decisions to improve the efficiency of your business. And you do that through assets.